we just were well, trying to learn how to function as human beings. Exactly. Hey, welcome to Footnotes, a behind the scenes look at what we value and why it matters here in Glendora, California. I am your co-host, Erica, joined always by Ethan. Hey, hello, Ethan. hello. And today we are joined by Lucas Parks. Hey, Lucas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lucas Parks. How's your coffee? It's, uh, it's starting to do its job. Starting to do its job. Starting good. Its job. All, right. Yes. All right. Is it, is it cooled off now? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, uh, we're talking about evangelism in continuation with our whole series that we started in January, but now we're doing every month of practicing the Christian life. So thanks for joining us, Lucas. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, before we jump in, though... Um, let's talk about the fact that we have all traveled together in a lot of different yeah. places, yeah. an unlikely trio, but we've had some fun. We have. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, related to mission. Yeah, Absolutely. So, yes, yep. yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, internationally, mm-hmm. uh, multi, multi culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Spain, mm-hmm. Maine. 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 That kind of felt like a different country. That, that did feel like a different it country. It did feel so. like, a, and you know what? I still regret not getting the lobster roll. Yeah. I did. It was like 20 bucks. Yeah. But it probably would have been the best food I've ever eaten. Yeah. Yeah. The hot dog I had. (laughs) 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 Right there on the the coast of Maine, because I don't like seafood, (laughs) was really good, though. I I have this theory that if you just eat on, (laughs) on the coast, uh, your food like automatically tastes like twenty percent better. Those are really good hot dogs. Yeah, Mm -hmm. the experience, the ambiance. Eat at the beach. Yeah. Yeah. I did try something of yours. And I sp- spat it out, spit it out, whatever, <laughs> like a child. Oh, that like yeah, the yeah. the like um, seafood platter that we got. Oh, yeah, that? yeah. Oh, it was like oh, like oh scallion? Scallop. 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 Scallion is the, yeah. it's like a green it's onion. A green onion, yeah. yeah. Scallops, delicious. Scallops are delicious. I took a few bites and I just, nope, I just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least you tried. You tried. Yeah, it was good. That's how I tell my kids, you at least have to try it. Yes, yes. It's true. Yeah. Lucas, let me ask you, what's your favorite place that we've all traveled together? Ooh. Uh, oh gosh, I mean, I, I feel like the pressure Ireland, is to say Ireland, say right? That. Yeah. Outside of I mean, that, you can outside say of that. Belfast, how's that? There you go. Sure. Um, <clears throat> it, it does sound weird, but I, I do, th- I really enjoyed Kenny Bunkport and that going cool. through mm-hmm. Boston yeah. and, and all of that. Spain mm-hmm. was nice too. Mm-hmm. Spain was pretty, yeah, was pretty good. But I don't know. I was, I think because I'd never been to Maine before. Um, even though it's in our country, it still felt, you know, kind of foreign. Yeah. The culture there was a little different. Yeah. And, and um, so, yeah, I really, yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was cool just hanging out with Brian Page as well. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. really, really like that guy. Yeah. Shout out to Brian. So, yeah. I mean, hey, honestly, Brian? even, yeah, Brian, I'm sure you listen. Sorry, the and monitor that, that, turned off. Fine. Is that's, that fine? The, okay. the battery's dead. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> this is a mess. Uh, no, we're good. Um, but, yeah, I think that's what it's even cool, just looking at those trips like missionally Brian was living you know he, he was living missionally there too oh, for sure yeah. Um, yeah. we met up with him at like a bowling alley mm-hmm. uh, for yeah. dinner <laughs> and like he walks in he's like saying hi to all these other people like that he really true, yeah. just yeah, yeah. Has, has dove into that community yeah. and just well, I think in those people. in those kind of places and I and you know Southern California is in in many ways and is becoming increasingly um, you know secular in that mm-hmm. sense that most people you know, in his context, aren't going to church on a regular basis. They don't see themselves as, mm-hmm. you know, Christians, even nominally uh, anymore. And mm-hmm. so um, the idea that, you know, people are, are just going to uh, stumble into your church mm-hmm. and go check it out or, yeah. you know, is is not really part of the equation yeah. there. And so you have to go to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. 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 I mean, so we're talking about evangelism and I think evangelism, maybe that word has probably some stigma to it sure. or just... Yeah. Like, hey, you know, you're standing on a podium out in a courtyard of like, right. you know, city center area, um, you know, waving a Bible up in the air. Like, sure. but really it's the idea of evangelism is, is getting out of the heart of living missionally. Yeah. Um, and so why don't you kind of explain that, that idea, that concept real quick, Lucas, just yeah. the idea of <clears throat> missionally, living missionally. Yeah, I think that's good. I think, to, you know, to demystify that, we, we kind of, I think when we, when we think about, <clears throat> excuse me, evangelism. Um, you know, we think of probably the the sharp end of the the spear of mm-hmm. that, like the conversation that I, I'm going to have, yeah. And, yeah. and how do I, you know, have the answers to these questions that I might not know the answers to? And there's a lot of I, I think anxiety that kind of can well up in in people in that way, and we come kind of paralyzed by fear. And and whilst we we want to share our experiences, sometimes I think you know that fear stops us from doing that, or mm-hmm. or the unknown, or uh, things like that. So. I think, um, yeah, I think the idea of missional living is that. I think one, realizing that um, Jesus has called us to that, 
Um, and so the Great Commission to go and make disciples mm-hmm. is, it, it wasn't just for the apostles to go plant churches, but that, that really is for, for all of us. Yeah. And so what does it look to make disciples? And that starts with people knowing Jesus yeah. mm-hmm. and, and hearing the good news of the gospel. And so for me, I think, what does it look like in my just everyday life? Mm-hmm. And how can I live my, my life, my, my going to work, my you know kids playing sports, like the people that God has already put in my um, orbit of my life, what does it look like to just do that with gospel intentionality mm-hmm. um, baked into that? And so I think for me, it's more of a mentality kind of shift and an awareness of rather than uh, a one conversation that I, mm. that I need to really be worried about in that, in that, mm. in that way. So yeah, that's good. Um, there's a place for that for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think it's an either or yeah. um, at all, but I think for most of us, what would it look like? Um, Acts talks about uh, that, that God has intended where we live. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. the people that are in your life and that you have influence with is not an accident. Yeah. Yeah. And so how, how then can you introduce those people mm-hmm. to Jesus or how can I share my faith or, or bring that into conversations mm-hmm. in, in just kind of normal, normal ways. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually one of the things I do really love about you, Lucas is like, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that just that simple, just hey, living missionally and yeah. finding those opportunities. Yeah. So what are some of the ways you found, you know, you and your family doing that as of late? Like you mentioned, yeah. like I've, I've seen like, I think Lawson he's in. Yeah. Um, so like a sports program doing basketball yeah. is that like through the city. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. through Glendora city league. Mm-hmm. And so get to meet, parents that way and um you know you see them every saturday and sometimes at practices Mm -hmm. and um you know you find myself at a at a table at the end you know eating pizza and wings with all the parents while the kids celebrate and you know you have those kind of conversations about like you know Mm -hmm. people you know different ideas of what's happening in our culture and stuff come up and as you share share your perspective on some of those things yeah Uh, there's opportunities Mm -hmm. i think to to explain why or Mm -hmm. uh, uh my you know Admittedly, it, sometimes it's easier for me as a pastor because people will often ask, well, what do you do? Yeah, and, sure. you know, I like to have fun with that sometimes. <laughs> How so? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, what, do you, yeah what, do you, what do you do with yeah. that? Well, I think in in some places, so like in Ireland, often, you know, we would maybe be in a pub um, or something like mm-hmm. that. And places that people aren't expecting, you know, maybe a pastor to a be, pastor to be yeah. hanging out mm-hmm. or something like mm-hmm. that. And so, you know, I would like I'll give you three guesses and you know if you can guess I'll you know buy your next buy or something yeah. like that you know yeah. or whatever it is and um yeah I never I never had to buy anybody anything so okay. it's kind of nice. nice. so no one ever guesses that yeah. so. no uh, but that kind of opens up uh, you know avenues of, yeah. of conversation yeah. as well so yeah. um yeah, yeah for sure so so yeah I think I think kids are a great opportunity and and those those parents um, obviously your jobs and, and actually that's mm. the disadvantage of being a pastor oh, yeah. right, yeah, right in sure. the ministry because yeah. you're not uh, you know hopefully all of my colleagues uh, know Jesus and, <laughs> and uh, uh, in that way so so you have to work a little bit yeah. extra harder mm-hmm. um, to that and so you know that's look like regular being a regular in uh, in coffee shops getting to know mm-hmm. the barista yeah. getting to you know mention Brian knows wait staff and stuff mm-hmm. like that and yeah. so I think being present in your community um, in an intentional kind of ways. And it's not just, oh, I'm just going to order the call. I'm going to try to, you know, be Jesus to, to, to mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. in that way. Um, and I think often in those kind of relationships, then you have opportunities as people, you know, have different points of need in their life and yeah. um, you're able to, um, to, to help meet those needs. Yeah. yeah. Another, another example that I, I know of yours that I, I really like is you host just a, a night about once a month with yeah. a group of guys. Yeah. And all you do is usually it's in your backyard. Sometimes another guy will kind of yeah. take up the like, hey, you guys come over to my place. Yeah. And that's it. That's all you kind of really do. Yeah. And then through that, it's just like, hey, can can my buddy come? Yeah. Like, yes, mm-hmm. please. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. a group of Christian guys. Yeah. Sometimes one or two of them aren't Christian. Yeah. And it's super mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it's, you know, it's cool seeing like, you know, like, oh, like, oh, those guys are talking. Hey, yeah. That's cool. Um, just to see that just in a social atmosphere, yeah. sometimes around a bonfire. Yeah. Um, I think that's good because I think, I think to, sometimes we think of mission living as a very individualistic kind of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Right. Uh, but part of mission of living is to, to do that in community. And so that's a mm-hmm. great example, right? We have same group of guys and they're inviting guys from work. Guy right. brought his boss the last time, you yes. know, and, but they get to come and it's not a Bible study, nothing right. wrong with that, but it's not, it's really community. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are hungry for community yeah, well, and sure. uh, in real authentic ways. And um, so can come and <clears throat> you, without even knowing it, you're being introduced to right. Christian yeah. community. Yeah. And, um, uh, my, I hope that, you know, 
that group as we hang out and we have a good time, we laugh, you know, all those things is, is, um, there's something about that that draws people in, yeah. um, because the spirit is there, like mm-hmm. the king, it, it, um, the Lord is working through those kind of relationships and, and conversations. Difference. Right. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, it's guys just horsing around it, but oftentimes in those, in those moments, you know, you, you know, as guys start to, you know, talk to, right. you know, whatever, um, there's all kinds of meaningful mm-hmm. conversations that are taking place mm-hmm. in there and guys open up or, or whatever it may be. And so you have opportunities to speak the gospel into people's life and through, you know, what seems to them maybe just advice mm-hmm. or, you know, listening to, uh, you know, what's going on in their life or mm-hmm. whatever like that. And so um, people start to be exposed to what the kingdom of God is like. Mm-hmm. I think most people know what church is like. They have they have no idea what the Christian life is like right. outside of a Sunday morning. Right, yeah. And so what does that look like to, yeah. to be exposed to Christian community yeah. um, and go, man, there's something about the way these guys interact and care for each other, love each other, yeah. you know. And often that if you look around the, you know, the bonfire, you're like, how are these guys all like, you know, <laughs> right. that guy yeah. and that guy don't seem like they should be yeah. like, you know, even, yeah. you know, friends yeah. in that sense. It's not, yep. uh, you know, there's a very diverse kind of uh, crew mm-hmm. around that. And there's something about... Well, that's what the gospel does. That's right. what Jesus does. He brings all kinds of people together mm-hmm. uh, in that way. And so I think there's a, a witness element to just even the community itself that's being assembled and watch. Uh, you get to watch how Christians care for each other, meet each other's needs. Mm-hmm. You get to be exposed to hopefully a, a community that is living counterculture culturally in many ways. Mm-hmm. And I think there's an attractive nature to that. Yeah. Um, when we were planting um, our, our church in, in village, in, in Belfast, um, I would say <clears throat> before we launched publicly, um, the vast majority of people, I would say the first, you know, 15, 20 people that came to faith um, came to missional communities first. Mm-hmm. They didn't come to our Sunday gathering. Yeah. We briefly explain yeah, that, so. what missional communities are. Yeah, so we had, we had, we had intentionally, you know, this is, we're having a meal together, um, and then eventually, you know, it, it, somewhere in there, there's uh, we open up the Bible. There was mm-hmm. prayer and stuff, and so people could invite their friends. Hey, we're having dinner. We're having some friends over. Yeah. You know, we're gonna have a discussion around, you know, whatever that is. It wasn't yeah. bait and switch. We wanted them to right, know what yeah. it was. But often those missional communities, um, outside of that, would be really intentional, and so they would be going. You know, we had a bunch of musicians, and they were going to to gigs and concerts and stuff together. They were reaching their friends in, in that way. So they, they'd they be exposed to Christian community first, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then that would lead into um, that community in more um, focused kind of ways. Oh, well now, hey, come and study the Bible with us. Mm-hmm. And and you know the questions that I've had, like how, how can this be answered? And mm-hmm. and um, a lot of times those, those people were literally coming to faith um, through those Christian missional communities, yeah. mm-hmm. um, being exposed to the gospel and being having those things explained. But it was in the context of their friends, their relationships. It wasn't a, hey, come to a Sunday morning gathering. Now, yeah. that happened eventually, right. too. And so that that's that's great. Still important. But there's a lot of people who have no interest in going to, to mm-hmm. church. They're yeah. not interested in that. They don't care about right. that. Um, but they do care about their friends mm-hmm. and those friends that are caring for them, especially in moments of of a uh, crisis or moments of kind of transitions in their life, right. having people who really came alongside and cared for them um, in ways that weren't superficial, in ways that were how Jesus loved mm-hmm. people in many ways. Yeah. yeah. And uh, were exposed to what the kingdom of God is like outside of um, a Sunday morning. And then eventually made their way obviously yeah. to church and you know yeah. were baptized and all of for that. Sure. So, for sure. um, so yeah, I think that was interesting in a more post-Christian context um, it was really through being exposed to Christian community and seeing the difference of that community as compared mm-hmm. to their non-Christian yeah. community and how they loved each other, cared for each other, met each other's needs. You know, it's a lot of that Acts, the early chapters of Acts, mm-hmm. right? right? They're sharing resources, they're eating together, yeah. they're, you know, and all the while kind of gospel intentionality yeah. kind of infused throughout yeah. that. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. so far um, in practicing the Christian life, this yeah. year we've talked a lot about like Bible memorization and yeah. reading your Bible, prayer, even serving the church. Yeah. A lot of those things can feel very like, well, within our community. Sure, yeah. Um, and so we're talking about evangelism now. And even in the future, I mean, we'll talk about like you preached on silence and solitude. Sure. It can feel very like, Okay, how do I transfer that into yeah, the idea yeah, of evangelism? Yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about how can we prepare to live on mission? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think a lot of those what we might call more like um, you know contemplative practices mm-hmm. or 
but that feels more like discipleship. But mission really is the outworking of our discipleship, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. it isn't just meant to be a means uh, uh, to an end uh, to terminate on ourselves. But the whole nature of disciple making is going and making more disciples, yeah. right? And so evangelism, when you think of evangelism, it's just pre-discipleship. That's all it is. It's just the front end of nice. discipleship. You know, that's great. so, <laughs> so Can we catch that evangelism yeah. is pre-discipleship. Yeah, that's, I, love I mean, that. honestly, yeah. that's that's what it is. Yeah, and so they don't know Jesus yet. Yeah. And and um, but in confidence we know. Hey, Jesus is calling people to himself. And so Paul's like, Hey, I got to go to the city because God already has people there. Mm -hmm. They just don't, they don't know it yet. Like, but there are people there that God has elected to himself. And so I would, that's what for me makes evangelism not scary Mm -hmm. because it's not up to me. I'm like, the Lord is already doing unseen things. And there's been times where I'm like, this person's never going to be interested (laughs) in it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, they're initiating stuff. And I was like, but I didn't know what was going on in their life. I didn't know the unseen parts that, that, that God does. And so I think that's, that's it. As we, as we grow in our faith, as we understand who Jesus is, as he transforms us, we experience Mm -hmm. that good news. The outworking of that is it's, it should spill out into other, other relationships in our life. And so that, that doesn't mean necessarily like, okay, we got to go down to the city center on a Saturday with placards or, you know, whatever that is, but like the person in the cubicle, cubicle next to you, or mm-hmm. you know the 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 parents at the at the school gates as you're doing school runs and pickups and drop offs or mm-hmm. whatever that may be you know what is my everyday kind of walking around life who are the people that I'm interacting with on a regular basis mm-hmm. and how can I inject um, in real natural ways into mm-hmm. conversations Jesus into that and and a lot of times when you I mean if you think about how Jesus interacted with people a lot of a lot of that was him meeting needs yeah. right and so. Right. I think those are ways we are looking for opportunities to mm-hmm. love people, to care for them, um, to to meet needs, and those are then opportunities for us to explain the reason yeah. why, Absolutely. you know, and and not and just in real natural ways, and so I think it's a demonstration of um, of love and the Spirit's power in our life towards those other people, and of course, then you might have that conversation with a stranger on an airplane or you know whatever, <laughs> and again, the, the Lord does that. those yeah. too. Yeah, great. That that's aw- that's awesome. Um, but that, that's probably not our normal everyday walking right. around life. And so yeah. what does it look like to be able to see people the way that Jesus saw mm-hmm. them? And Jesus didn't meet everybody's needs. I think that's another way we get, mm-hmm. you know, we get yeah. paralyzed. You're like, I can't meet everybody's needs. And you're like, well, Jesus didn't either. And that's mm-hmm. okay. He didn't well, heal everyone. Good. And so yeah. who are people though, that would I have opportunities? And I think in, in times of suffering in times of transition, mm-hmm. Hey, I've just moved to this neighborhood. I'm just switching jobs. Like those inflection points in our life are often opportunities where people are, right. are uh, more receptive to right. the gospel, um, going through, you know, breakups or what, you know, relational problems, mm-hmm. parenting stuff. Like yeah. there's many opportunity for us to bring the good news of the gospel to bear mm-hmm. in that, which then leads to the hope that we have that undergirds all right. those things. Yeah. Right. right. Um, in our faith in that way as people ask about the hope within us Mm -hmm. we have opportunities to do that and so a lot of mission living is exposing people to the hope within us Mm -hmm. in in ways that um, that they can actually tangibly experience the kingdom of God in Mm -hmm. real ways Um, so lots of opportunities for programs events people to invite at church great awesome Mm -hmm. I think that programmatic way to to approach um, (laughs) evangelism is right and appropriate um, but if that's the only way we think about evangelism, I actually don't. I think we're missing out on right. on really the normal everyday yeah. uh, missional living that mm-hmm. that is that we see in the scripture. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so Jesus feeds the five thousand. He he preaches to the crowds. There's there is that element of that, but he's also you know spitting in people's eyes. And, you know, <laughs> having, <laughs> but he's also in eating. Mind, in he's eating mind. and drinking <laughs> with sinners. You know, like he's attending their weddings. <laughs> yeah. Like. You know, there's he's meeting them normal in these, in these normal yeah. everyday life, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and so I think I think that's am I a friend of sinners yeah. like Jesus yeah. is? That's, that's a good question. Um, and I don't, you know, I mean sinners in in that that's what we all were, right? So right. I don't mean that in a pejorative way, in that way. But I, are you know, mm-hmm. am I friends with those people, or have I created a, a you know hermetically sealed bubble? And that's when you can go, well, all of these practices just seem to kind of be inward, mm-hmm. but they really were never intended to stay stay, stay there, there, right? Yeah. As we grow, then that, that moves outward yeah. in mission. Good. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's definitely still a boldness, though. You know, like, sure. that, yeah. that, that, that yeah. stated. Yeah. I think, um, 
even just that, that's why it's so important to continue to go through these spiritual disciplines and grow yeah. all them. They're not all a cart. Yeah. They are all like really feed into each other. And yeah. so I think that's a huge way for us to grow in our evangelism yeah. and, and that zeal and that desire is through growing in our Bible reading and our prayer, you Absolutely. know, and everything yeah. as, as we grow um, in our, in our faith with Jesus. And um, I think to kind of put us on the spot a little bit, if we just had to take a second, like what are maybe something, what, what's, where's an opportunity in our own lives mm. um, that we feel like we could even do better um, or like maybe like oh, God's kind of put me in a situation um, or, you know, I've had these incidences where I've been able to maybe do something like what's, what's some examples where it's like, you know, maybe I could do better. I could be a little bit more bold here. Um, and I, and I can kind of start if, yeah. if you want. Yeah. Um, so a couple things that jump out to mind for me is I love going to like classic coffee just to work. Um, and so there's been, you know, opportunities for good conversations to come up there and, you know, you're working, you know, someone kind of like, Hey, are you using this chair? Kind of thing. Like, yeah, like there are just, there's so many just situations where the conversation can kind of start in, in a situation like that. And so I've even, I've even feel like that's where, like, that's probably an area where I could mm-hmm. like be more intentional, settle in, um, in there. And even just, um, a few weeks ago, I was there working and this guy came up to me. He's like, Oh, what is, uh, what is, what is your tattoo say? Yeah. And it's like, oh, what a way! Like, and mm. it turns out he's yeah. a Christian guy. Yeah. Um, oh, and so, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, like sorry, oh, never mind. I'm yeah, on side. Yeah. Well, we're, we both were like rats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. Um, no, but it's just he found something to connect with and ask sure. a simple question. Yeah. And that's what I loved is we had like a 10, 15 minute conversation. Yeah. From just a simple question, mm-hmm. um, it was nothing weird. It was just mm-hmm. you know like hey, I have yeah. a tattoo, and he asked me about it. Yeah. Um, and so it's just stuff like that, like. Yeah, that's where I could, you know, I think I, that's where personally I feel like I could do better in and just those mm-hmm. public spaces, putting myself, especially like we talked about, like we're on church staff, yeah, yeah. being yeah. in the office all day For around, sure. you know, yeah. fellow believers. It's like, well, maybe I, I take a day and go work out, you know, in the public at a coffee shop and yeah. kind of make my rounds and stuff. Yeah. Another is um, in, uh, going to get my hair cut at a place, yeah. you know, a public place, Tropicana Golf. Um, and I think, is that where you've been going to? I now? have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they do good work. Um, but Shout honestly, out to Jesse. Yeah, my guy Benny. Um, <laughs> they do good work, but then it's just the reality is it's like yeah. I, I mean, for like 10 years, I had the same barber, a uh, former guy that, a uh, friend of mine that we used to go to the same church. And so after he moved away, and so I was like, I got to find a new place. And so, anyways, found this place. I do, I do really enjoy their work. Yeah. But was, there was a moment where I'm like, I don't know. I kind of, there's another guy I know actually through Foothill who cuts hair. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll go to him. But then, honestly, I kind of felt like my reasoning was. Like, I don't know. They're just a different vibe. Yeah. They're not like, you know, they'll, they'll cuss. It's just, it just doesn't, I don't feel comfortable there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's like a customer that came in, reeked like, like reeked of weed. And I was just like, I don't want, I don't want this. Yeah. But then I was kind of like, as I, expl- I was explaining that to someone, I'm like, wait, this is probably one of my <laughs> only like <laughs> yeah, 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 outlets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like where yeah. there's a guy like, <laughs> yeah. you know, working on my hair for 45 minutes, yeah. 30, mm-hmm. 30, 45 minutes yeah. and these other people. So. So even even like that, so I'm like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't be so quick to yeah. remove myself from that you know, mm-hmm. uncomfortable situation yeah. and stuff like that. So personally, those are a couple little things that even I found mm-hmm. that I could be more missional. I think yeah. in my living. Yeah. What about you guys? Anything jump out? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I really do think I, I'm I'm feeling the challenge of like um, being surrounded by Christians a lot of the time mm-hmm. because even our two youngest kids go to a Christian school, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so. Um, even some of those opportunities that were that were there, obviously, you know, sports leagues in the city league. There's some of that or whatever. But my neighbor is our youth pastor, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm still working on him. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, in that or, way. So appreciate the mission. Yeah, living there. yeah. I'm on a corner, so I even have like less immediate neighbors. So, yeah. uh, so that 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 really is the challenge. I think for me is to uh, to go. Okay, how I I am going to have to be intentional mm-hmm. about being in space. Uh, where there are non-Christians yeah. um, and maybe that's a, a pickleball league or, you know, that seems to be, you know, a hot thing at the minute or whatever yeah. that, that is. And so, which we actually have yeah, a, yeah. A, a men's group, a pickleball or I don't know, that's men's, defeating the purpose. Yeah. Oh, sh- <laughs> shoot. Well, I do, but I do think, so yeah, I think, I think, I think even, you know, you mentioned like our, our, the guys group that, that come to my house and hang out, there's a couple of those kind of environments. And, and I think even reminding like, Hey, m- reminding those kind of guys, like, Hey, bring, bring a yeah. friend, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. and push that more. Yeah. Yeah. And to actually, yeah. to actually realize, Hey, we can do this together in community mm-hmm. in a, in a real natural way that doesn't feel like 
we're inviting someone to some yeah. cult meeting or, you know, mm-hmm. some bait and switch kind of, you know, thing. That's not but what this is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, yeah. Get them the tattoo. Yeah. You know. yeah I think this is very yeah. challenging for me because well. I am not, and not that, I mean, this, I mean, it's really like, you don't have to be an extrovert or introvert person, but like yeah. it's when I go to the grocery store, I am very like, I will go in, I will get what I need and I will leave. Yeah like random conversations really throw me off <laughs> and throw me through a loop. And so I'm thinking like, well, I go to the gym all the time. Yeah. And those people at the front desk are usually the same people. And yeah. I'm very much like headphones in, don't make eye contact, yeah. <laughs> like scan the thing and leave. Um, and like, I should not be approaching it that way. And even like pushing myself out of my own comfort zone. Of yeah. Like you're not going to die if you have one conversation yeah, with yeah, someone yeah. of like, Hey, like have a good day. Just starting off yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Um, build, yeah. build a relationship with them. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah, that is not my natural go to, to, I do think, I think, yeah, I think having, even like small things. Yeah. yeah. And there are times obviously, but I think trying to, how do I live a more open life? Mm-hmm. How, do, how do I have a posture of a more yeah. open and, and inviting life in that way? And sometimes that's with, you know, kind of strangers in that. But, and sometimes it is just, you know, um, I, I'd say probing, but I, I mean this in like, a, like, hey, what'd you get up to this weekend? Yeah. yeah. Like, and depending on their answer, like they ask you to say, mm-hmm. oh, well, you know, what did you do this weekend? Yep. And, you know, mm-hmm. so there's ways I think that we begin to invite people into right. our life. And it's not like, what'd you do this weekend? You know, or what did, you know, what did, what did you do? Well, I went to church. You should, you know, like, yeah. I think there's yeah. ways yeah. that we begin to. Yeah to expose people to, um, to Christ in ways that, um, yeah. are, seem very normal, mm-hmm. uh, in that way. Yeah. And the reality is, is not everybody is, um, you know, Jesus says like, we go fishing for men. And I think that's really appropriate. Cause if you ever go fishing, <laughs> like, I'm not a good, I'm not a great fisherman. And, um, but you know, sometimes the fish bite yeah. and sometimes they don't mm-hmm. and that's, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You that's know, really but good. you're still being faithful mm-hmm. in casting. Yeah. And so that's yeah. what we're called to do is, yeah. is to, uh, to, to cast, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, the bait of the gospel yeah. out there, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, yeah. people aren't interested mm-hmm. and that's okay. That, that our job is to be faithful yeah. and it's, it's God who produces yeah. the fruit. Yeah. But, um, it, if we're not being faithful in mm-hmm. living lives with, uh, I think uh, a mindset of gospel intentionality and uh, lives with a bit of an open posture mm-hmm. or, you know, casting that, that uh, bait, if you will, mm-hmm. um, we, we don't, we remove the opportunity Absolutely. for fruitfulness. And so yeah. I think, I think that's it. Sometimes mm-hmm. we focus so much on like bearing fruit, bearing right, fruit, right, like, yeah. is this going to work? Yeah. What do I say? How do I like, you know, and all of that. And I'm like, Hey, just be faithful. Yeah. And I think um, more so I'm realizing the challenge is when I am with those people who are very good at this and gifting. Sure. I think about like yeah. my grandma who will get on in any sort of public transportation and yeah. immediately has found her best friend yeah. or even <laughs> Tucker will be out at a coffee shop and he's like, Hey, what's your name, man? It's yeah. so great. Like he's very natural at yeah. having those conversations. Sure. And my immediate reaction is like, why are you talking to this person? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and I, I think to some degree that's fine. Right. Cause there is a gift of evangelism. Yeah, so absolutely. some people are actually Do just have gifted gift. at it. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, and so I don't actually think I'm one of those people. I don't think I just have this natural gift of sure, evangelism. Yeah. Sure. For me, it's like, I have to, there's an awareness and a shift and a mindset uh, I like people. I uh-huh. think I'm, I'm, you know, uh, a, a people person in that sense, but I don't, I don't feel like I'm like, man, I have this gift of yeah. evangelism. Yeah. So no, I think it is, it's harder personality, yeah. you know, introverts maybe a little bit, but so I think that begins with like, Hey, how can I open my life a mm-hmm. little bit um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. and start, start with some easy wins. Mm-hmm. Well, at the time of, uh, this, you know, episode coming out, it's beginning of May and mm-hmm. right at the same time, like, uh, Erica said, like. Uh, we're releasing the resources on just evangelism yeah. And, yeah. and stuff like that. So um, this is obviously one of those resources. Mm-hmm. So congratulations. You are listening to one of those. Um, another one that we're actually going to be plugging, though, is uh, Ray Comfort. Um, yeah. And so we have him coming for a Sunday seminar on May 21st. And so uh, Ray is known for a little bit more of that, like, on the street evangelism. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, so yeah. which I which I love, like, you know, we've been talking about this whole episode, like, evangelism is a lot simpler than you know yeah. than it needs to be mm-hmm. um but i love that we're still going to get glean some some insight yeah. from him on sure. hey how how do we have you know that kind of on the street bull conversations he's not necessarily someone that's like on a podium you know like preaching the Yelling gospel but he's really good like um i loved watching his videos of just having 
one-on-one conversations with people on the mm-hmm. street. Yeah, and he's yeah he's he's an apologist and all that, and so uh, I'm excited for uh, the church to be able to hear from him. Um, he's from New Zealand, so that'll yeah, be fun. Ike will be there. Yeah, probably in the front row. <laughs> um, you know, Ike lived in New Zealand, right? I, he did he? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I've, I haven't heard from him, but I have heard from other people that he's there. Yeah, that he's yeah. from there. Oh, yeah. Not from there. He lived there. <laughs> he lived there. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's gonna be an awesome resource. Uh, Lucas, what are the other some of the other resources? Just yeah. kind of call those out. Yeah, I think um, you know, there's a couple books, and we'll send this out in an email as well. Um, mm-hmm. That I think have helped me to kind of just think about this in a more normal kind of you know mm-hmm. every day. So one of those one of those is called the Tangible Kingdom, mm-hmm. and um, uh, you know, there's filled with kind of anecdotes and stories in there too of of. Uh, some examples I think that I found inspiring as well, but also mm-hmm. gives a little bit of a framework of uh, what is missional, you know, community mm-hmm. essentially uh, look like in that way. And then another one, a friend of mine wrote a book called Friend of Sinners, hmm. and mm-hmm. um, just kind of looking at Jesus's approach to yeah. to um, to that. And so we'll reference a few of those things Sweet. as well. But um, those are you know less technical books around like apologetics. I think there's there's those are great resources yeah. too. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I think these will help you approach it in kind of day-to-day life that's a little great. bit cool that's mm-hmm. great. yeah well uh as we wrap up um anyone have any fun like street evangelism stories or anecdotes that they've witnessed or experienced um it, well in belfast mm-hmm. um i i uh we actually had a guy you know kind of up on a like milk crate soapbox yeah. kind yeah. of thing or whatever and so i'm like i just gotta sit here and just see how this goes yeah. so i just kind of stood off to the side and literally no one, you know, everybody just walking by yeah, yeah, a very yeah. crowded intersection kind of, you know, market marketplace area. And, um, but he know he finally noticed me just like standing mm. over in the yeah. corner. And I think he then thought, oh, I'm like listening. And so he kind of like zeroed in on me. And finally I just like walked up to him and was like, hey, you're man. like, Hey, I yeah, 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 yeah. guess my job. You yeah, have yeah, three yeah. choices. <laughs> exactly. right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't so, guess. <laughs> but we had a, we had a good conversation and you know, I was just asking him like, Hey, how, how does this work? How does this go for you? Yeah. You know, kind That's of thing. Cool. And, and, um, you know, I think some, sometimes people think, oh, th- this is just me being faithful and, mm. and, you yeah. know, it's almost like a win if people don't listen because mm. I'm I'm doing the hard work or whatever, yeah. and so just tried to ask him questions around yeah. effectiveness. And, and, and was he like actually stuff. preaching truth? Or yes, okay. uh, yes. So there was nothing that you would say that is technically wrong or mm-hmm. whatever. But you know, it's I wouldn't say it's the the whole picture of the gospel uh, in, in that way. And so, and honestly, you, you have literally people just walking. They're walking to work and mm-hmm. they're like yeah. shopping or yeah. you know so. Maybe not the most effective environment for mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So. Which is why it's so huge to build relationships because you yeah. really like yeah, yeah. there's more equity there right. Right. than yeah. just someone passing by going to you know the store. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my favorite example recently is um, the way I go to work. I will like drive on Arrow Highway and then turn left onto the 57, and there's this like corner that has like it's in San Dimas. So if you know it, there's like the San Dimas sign, and then there's like this little covered wagon thing it's, oh yeah yeah for some reason san dimas is a western town that's a whole other story i love it, I love it. but <laughs> <laughs> like I, why who made that decision but okay. there's this every once in a while this older man and he's like head to toe covered even in the summer like he's like like bundled up with gloves on and he just has this sign that says like god bless usa and he's got a rose in one hand and an American I've seen flag that in the yeah, other. I've seen that guy. Mm. And it's just one of those things where it's like, you just know that, and it's not abrasive. He's just yeah. kind of there like waving his flag and, you know, standing at the street corner and just doing his thing. It's like the right. thing that he feels like he needs to do. Yeah. yeah. Right. So have you ever seen anyone chat with him? No, I don't think yeah. so. And it's one of those, like nobody really walks on that corner. It's not like it's a, a thorough, yeah. thorough thing. Mm. Through, I don't, I don't know. know. Thoroughfare. <laughs> Thoroughfare. Thank you. Pedestrian eyes. <laughs> wow. And um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, but but there's a lot of cars that go through there. So mm-hmm. I think he's just like, yeah, I just want people to know. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah the only one that jumps out to me is um, I was in AM. Uh, is is in Covina AMC theater. Uh, I was going to see Superman. I remembered what it was. I was thinking out loud Superman. earlier. <laughs> I was like, was that Batman? <laughs> no, it was Superman. Which one? And I think the first Henry Cavill one. Okay. Is there more now? I don't know. I know he's, but there was a he's couple been of multiple. Those. He's been Superman in yeah. other iterations of that DC mm-hmm. universe. But um, I think it was just the first uh, Henry Cavill Superman. 
Um, but there's a guy out there, and I th- I don't remember what his mo was. Like he, he was tried just, to tie it in. Like he you know did. who the real Superman he, he is. Kind of you know, did, kind but of, he know. was oh. like condemning about it. Oh, like yeah. Ooh, okay, yeah. like if you see this movie, yeah. And okay. so I don't really think, and I don't. I, it was it was really confusing. I didn't, I didn't have a conversation with him, mm-hmm. but I definitely was listening um, for for a minute, and it was just like this weird like messy kind of attempt mm. of like yeah like Superman is portraying God and this is evil you shouldn't watch this so it's not like a, he wasn't like tying yeah. it in huh. right. like hey if you really want a hero yeah. like let me introduce you to Jesus that yeah. would have been good yeah. should have <laughs> yeah. um, but instead Jesus it was like That's right. it was yeah. like he assumed people were like no you're worshiping Superman and here's why this is dangerous I don't yeah. know it was just yeah Huh. It was Weird. not the best tactic, but yeah. um, hopefully he has different material now. Yeah. Um, since <laughs> doesn't seem like those hopefully movies been, have uh, done all that good. Living. Living. Yeah. And maybe, if not, hey, check out this a, podcast. More of a Marvel guy, and he's just maybe <laughs> maybe he connects with that yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that MCU more. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Well, hey, Lucas is, is awesome. Yeah, uh, having you on us. and just As always, hearing yeah, more of this, fun chatting. Going on another trip sometime soon. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, um, Fresno? Well, hey. Where? Fresno? Fresno? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I've never been to Fresno. Like, Let's go to yeah. Sanger. It was right. a yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Great. Yeah. That, that was, was good fun. One. You missed out. I did yeah. miss out. Yeah. It's okay. I think I was uh, teaching in another church that Sunday. Yeah. All right. Hey, Phil Church, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, definitely lean in. Check out those resources Lucas mentioned. Uh, links in the bio or check your email. Um, yeah. But we'll see you in a couple more weeks. See you guys. Bye. Unpack the uncertainty that I of my story. Um, all right, five, six, seven, eight. Um, well, cool, Lucas. Like, so we have you know at the time of this episode being released, um, we yeah. Uh, what did I, did I do? Something five, six, seven, yeah, eight. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and kick and turn and kick. And... <laughs> Please let that be the ending. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do that. That'll, that'll be good.